how's it going? In this week's video we're talking aquaponic system design and in fact I'd like you guys out there to give me a hand in designing our new one. So to begin with I thought I'd catch people up who aren't familiar with our system on what we've got at the moment. Now we'll start off here with the fish tank and in this fish tank we have 16 to 18 jade perch. A bit hard to see them without the sun on them but this video from earlier this morning gives you a better idea on what these guys are looking like and their size. I'd say the majority of them are around about oh, 500 grams to a poundish, if not a tad over. Now these guys live in this 1000 litre or roughly 265 gallon tank and all their poop is brought up through the solid lifting outlet out into a solids filter. Um, I won't be explaining how these works, there's other videos you can check out, that links down in the description that um, go through all the different components, but that's basically a radial flow settler. And from there it flows into a moving bed bioreactor which is some extra biofiltration. Um, last week's video was all about these little jobbies. And then from there, the water goes into the sump. The system is a split flow, meaning that the pump, that gray line, splits the flow, some out to the hydroponic grow bed side and the other back into the fish tank. Now the grow beds I'm running at the moment are media beds. So we have a 300 liter-ish grow bed made from a side of an IBC and it's just running with a loop siphon at the moment. Then we have, I think it's roughly around about a 400 litre-ish bed. It came with its own stand. I bought off someone who was um, yeah, just downsizing their aquaponics. And then I have another 300 litre-ish bed over there. All of them are the same. They're flood and drain media beds and I basically need to move them. Now I've worked out due to the number of fish I have in here and how much feed they actually get because we won't be harvesting these guys, I'll be running the system. I need roughly 400 litres of media to act as the biofilter for the system so we can process the ammonia waste the fish generate. Now I'm also going to include a moving bed bioreactor in the next build because I think it is a little bit of an insurance policy in case something goes pear-shaped. So uh, that's what I've got at the moment. Now I'll take you down to the old aquaponics area, just there, which is the new aquaponics area. We'll have a look at some of the toys I've got to play with. But before we go down and look at what we're doing with the new system, the fish wanted to remind you that I do have that online backyard aquaponics guide for beginners where you can learn about aquaponics if you're new to the growing method. There's a link down in the description, 1995 US. It is fully interactive. Uh, basically, you can ask it questions and it will present different sections of the guide for you to learn more about aquaponics. So do suss it out if you're new to aquaponics and you want to have a bit of a crack at learning how to start a system off the right way the first time. So you folks who have been following us for a number of years will know that this is the original area that we were growing our aquaponics in. I actually have a number of these tanks. I actually had two set up just there, twin tanks, and they weren't getting as much shade because we've renovated, lifted the house. So they're getting a little bit more shade down here than they used to. But I had two tanks there, another area here that had just a straight fish farm and then I had the aquaponics down there. Enough of that reminiscing. Uh, what I'm thinking about is um, diversifying and not using just media beds as such anymore. We'll still have the fish tank, we'll cover this bit first. We're still going to have that fish tank and from that hole in the back, I will have it running into a radial flow settler to remove the bulk of the solids and they'll go off into a mineralization tank, which I forgot to show you before that we do have in the system. And then it will go into the moving bed bioreactor and then from there it will be going into some sort of sump tank. And I will also have my existing electrical box moved back down here where it was originally. Those pavers give you a rough idea of the footprint it's going to leave. And we have electricity down here. And um, so yeah, that's where the bulk of the power and all my little bits and pieces will be kept. Now, as for grow beds, as you can see, I've got a couple lined up here. And this is where I like help from you guys here because I know how I'd like to set it up, but I thought, you know, I've been doing this for long enough. Maybe you guys would like a chance at designing my system for me. So my rough idea and what I thought I'd do to begin with was basically have the sump tank over the back there with a grow bed on top and then have another media bed down this side here. Actually, the media bed that's in the current system, that's just there for display purposes, give you a rough idea on what's going on. And then have a dual root zone bed here made out of one of these large troughs. That's basically clay media in the bottom that then wicks the aquaponic water up into a soil root pouch. 
and then yeah basically we can grow some plants in there because that media bed and the biofilter will look after all the biofiltration i don't necessarily need it for biofiltration so that's what i was in originally intending to do and then i remembered um, dave from bluestone aquaponics g'day dave if you're watching um, unfortunately he had to shut his um, farm down but he, I had some beaver boards he imported for his farm and I picked up a few off him. So I've got these to play with and I was, that's an option. I could cut a couple of them down and run them in either over the top of the sump as a deep water culture or maybe over here as a deep water culture. And um, yeah, have a play around with that because I haven't done that as of yet. So that's something I'm considering doing. Uh, the other thing I was thinking about doing is running some aquaponic NFT rails I got from John uh, when I purchased a small little aquaponic system that I'm here to set up on the deck from him. So what we have here is basically a rain gutter NFT system. We have some end caps on the back here. Try and get out of the shadow, but they've got little flaps so you can just make sure that the little NFT um, lines feeding it um, aren't clogged and everything's running all right. And we've got the classic, the classic Hucho Pucks. Um, if you don't follow Hucho and you're into hydroponics, definitely check out his channel. There will be a link. Um, he made some of these up for it. And I've also got NF, um, little pots that I can put in there as well, NFT pots. And down the other side, uh, John's made up a little bit of a drain arrangement, which I'm fairly sure if I raise this up a little bit higher, um, I could actually add a couple more rails on here. I could have that going down into the sump tank. Now, the main reason I haven't had NFT rails or this sort of set up previously is because here in southeast Queensland it gets rather hot and through summer that water could heat up and cause issues so I've just decided um, to give it a miss until now even though I do have some proper NFT rails but yeah I thought I'd give it a crack at um, using some of John's or maybe the other stuff we'll just have to wait and see. Now I was talking um, dual root zone before so the other idea I've got is to make a dedicated dual root zone bed here using a veggie pod which is something we have grown with quite a bit over the years. I actually had two of them set up along the front here and they grew us some awesome brassicas a couple of years back, just after we moved back in after the renovations. I have modified all my veggie pods because they're essentially basically um, an expensive wicking bed on a stand that you're buying components. Now what I've done, oh, I'll show you how they work first. You can see they have got a bit of a false tray down the bottom here. And that's the reservoir area down below with some little legs that I'll probably put sand in to wick up water into the soil. Now I've modified them and put a fill tube in there because typically they just spray water on the top and hope it you know, saturates all the way through. I like to have the moist um, underside so it can wick up when needed. Now on this one here, um, the way it works is water goes in there, fills up and then overflows through some little holes down here, which actually are what come in the veggie pods normally. On my large ones and mums and dads, I got a little bit creative and put in overflows that have the ability to be turned upwards and increase the actual volume of water being held in the base. Now, I'm thinking I'm going to have to do something like that here to direct the water from the end there down over back into the sump tank and obviously with the rail system in this one here those bricks would be needed to lift it all off the ground um, so we could have the water flowing by gravity. So between the floating raft, dual root zones, the NFT and um, you know there's basically option fatigue as Bianca called it. Uh, just too many options for me to decide what to do. Well I could, I could just turn it into media beds and make it all easy. But what I thought I'd get you folks to do is I've got a bit of a code down the bottom there, NFT for nutrient film technique, DWC for deep water culture which is the raft, uh, MB for media beds and DRZ for dual root zone. Down um, in the comments just let me know what sort of bits and pieces you would like to see in the system. Just quickly, uh, while we're at it, I thought I'd just run through the what's happening with the hoop house. I haven't set it up yet, but I do have some lengths of top hat um, just down there that run the whole length of the hoop house. And I will be putting on a very light shade cloth, mainly just to stop leaves from these trees coming in. As you can see, I think we're around about three o'clock in the, no, it couldn't be three o'clock, around about two o'clock in the afternoon. And this tank here is still getting sunlight. Whereas the other one up under the house is in the shade. So that will mean that I won't have to heat this tank as much through our winter, even though we don't have blistering cold ones. Um, it does help keep the fish warm um, and basically consuming food and pumping out the ammonia. 
And as I said before, there is a competition this week giving away two free copies of our online beginner's guide to aquaponics. Um, you can keep them yourself or give them to a family or friend who's aqua curious if you've already got a copy. All you'd have to do is let me know down below what grow bed style you would like to see in the next build whether I use that or not your name will go into a drawer and I'll pull out two randomly and I'll let you know via a comment under your comment and uh, yeah we'll sort out some way you can get in contact with me and yeah we'll pass on the information on how you can log in to the guide uh, before I go really do want to thank you folks who do come along every week and suss out the videos and say good day and leave comments really appreciate talking to you thanks again to those folks who've bought the guide to, and helping to support the channel that way and also via the membership groups the YouTube members and also the farm your own yard patron site thank you folks but I will leave it there I do hope you're all well and happy in your own aquaponics and gardens booming and I'll catch you next video cheers folks and happy growing you are aware you can't grow pigs Yes, Bianca. In yes, um, he's your little piggy. He is. And I didn't want him to drown, so I put him up the top oh, there. Oh, you're so thoughtful. Oh, he was in the green one before. I was a little bit concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Just a wombat. <laughs>